All right, so I'm here at this Arbor Lawson with Fanny. I'm here with the Mullen family. Uh, first of all, I just want to say congratulations to y'all and everything that y'all have done. The way y'all managed to stick together and push each other, you know what I mean? It's, what, it's for y'all, correct? It's for y'all. Father, mother, y'all, I'm talking about y'all doing some amazing things. And it was an honor for me to just meet you, the kids. And now I see where they get that strength and that, that mindset from just by meeting you guys. And um, I'm honestly, like I feel grateful just to be in y'all presence. Cause there's a lot of families that don't understand what it takes just to stick together. You understand what I'm saying? Like for y'all to stick together, coming from where we come from, a lot of people don't make it out. But look at us right now. Y'all on that side, I'm on this side. Ain't we doing some amazing things? So, um, First of all, I, the reason, one of the reasons, main reason that Ron helped is because I talked to the boys at uh, at the school, and we was talking about making sure that we secure everything for our parents. The main reason was to make sure that our parents are happy. That's what, cause y'all sacrificed for us, correct? Right. You know what I mean. You came from where? You was you raised? What, what was you raised up? Pompano. Pompano. Mm -hmm. And if anybody know about Pompano. You know what I mean? So, to have four boys in and come from Pompano, that's a gift within itself. Am I wrong or right? You're right. You know what I mean? Same thing. I got shot at 16, so, and I had to raise two. I had, I had one and I had to raise the older and stuff. So, you know, my older brother, my older Yeah. So, that man, the older brother, so, this is rough. Really rough. I, I started out young, rough out in the streets. Yeah. You know, it made me understand a whole lot and changed a whole lot. So I put a lot of things into them. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of time in them, trying to keep away from all that craziness that goes on in the street. Yeah. And got them in football as soon as I was able to. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's that's the thing. Like, uh, did you feel like football was going to be a great distraction? No. Okay, so the main thing was to just to turn them away from the life that we have. Well, me and my, me and most of all my brothers played football. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I say, when I went through what I went through, it's like, you know, having them is like, and then I settled myself down and got really focused and got, you know, together how we was. It's like, hold on, you know what? Let me get my boys on what me and my brothers was on. Yeah. Getting in this football, what we love, basketball, football, and Get them out. I used to hide him going head up. Him going head up with his older brother. Yeah. Practice, you know, rather practice. And on times that they ain't got practice. Yeah. Put on your pads. Let's go, then. Let's go out here and hit it out here in, in the yard. Yeah. You know, get that toughness up. So my question to you, right? What would be your advice to other fathers that's either in the home or out the home, trying to get their sons prepared for life? Well, it's it's you got to, you got to keep them focused. And you gotta have them in activities and keep them occupied and doing things so they're not bored and wanna go off and get misled with their friends and going out with friends who ain't doing nothing right, productive with themselves, you know, and just going and going off doing something crazy. Yeah. And being there and watching them and knowing what they got, what they going into, you know, yeah. getting into, what they going throughout the day and keeping an eye on them, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of parents, you know, by working hard sometimes, it's hard to do that, but you have to still check on your kids throughout that day yeah. and making sure where they at, you know what I mean, who yeah. they with, is they with the right, right person, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I done been around people, and like I said, I done been around, I had homeboys and stuff that I fell off with and went with and got into trouble with them. So, so, so I know it's easy to get in trouble. Yeah. You know, with so, you what you, so what you basically saying is, Experience was the best teacher. Yeah, it was definitely was, you know, a good experience for me. Yeah. You know, to understand how life is and how you can easily get misled and get into trouble and yeah. get yourself, you know what I mean, off track. Yeah. And doing the right thing. Man, so, I, I honestly want to say that I appreciate you, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? For setting the, the, the bar high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It ain't no such thing yeah. as excuses, man. Yeah. And that's the same yeah. thing with you, Wood. Like, like, I appreciate y'all for setting the bar so high because. Coming from where we come from, a lot of people make excuses. I ain't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is a testament. Your boys here, and we missing two. Oh, yeah, ones exactly. at work yeah. and ones yeah. away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Four boys. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? That's hard. That what people consider hard. That's what people consider hard. That's right, because I asked you a question earlier. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? How did how was it raising four boys? I mean, it, it was easy to me, because love don't cost a thing. And it's just simple as that. And I'm I'm very spiritual, you know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect, but I use God a lot. Yeah. That's what I was told to do, so that's what I did. And myself, I ran track, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. So with the football traits and the track traits, they had it, they yeah. got it. And so, before those streets had got what God gave me, yeah. I'd have laid down. And I went laying down. That's right. Yeah, everybody know me know I like to be up. That's right. So, but one thing I can give advice about when it comes to these kids is co-parenting. Yeah, that's big. No matter what the situation is, Gonna have to find a way to work it out because that could be a big factor in making the kid lose. Yeah. I never experienced it as far as the kid losing because of the co parenting thing, but I just see that we fixed it. Like, yeah. Everybody have issues. Right. So we fixed it before it got out of hand. So I think that was another reason our kids was able to keep continuing on yeah. their success because they didn't have to worry about. If my man they did. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, at odds. And that, that, I think that's a lot. Of, uh, that's a problem within our community is that it's the parents are, are at odds and they, they suffer. It's a big yeah. problem. So yeah. that's why I keep yeah. congratulating you problem. guys on what y'all did because by y'all communicating, it helped them. And it's still helping them because we got young boy, yeah. young boy, yeah. right, following in his brother's footsteps. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and she always be hard on him now. She always, she don't give it. She gonna be hard yeah. on him. And you need that as a mom. That's why I say love don't cost a thing. Yeah. You know, he give me my props, I give him his props. Because mm -hmm. he, he was strong in the providing part. Very strong in the providing part. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not going to make nobody look negative in no situation. But he was very, he was very positive. Very, like, he was daddy. Yeah. In that, in that, in that providing part, he never lacked. Never. I never dreamed about child support. Yeah. I want to keep it that deep. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So the part he didn't have, I had. That's right. So I don't complain about nothing. That's I real. Don't. That's real. So, I don't. So to so that, tell me about how it was, like, growing up seeing that. But growing up, um, seeing my parents, like, get along, you know, when they separated, you know, that, helped, that helped me, uh, me, me and my brothers a lot because um, we seen them, like, they didn't lose focus even though they, um, they separated, they didn't lose focus, you know. Even though behind closed doors, if they was like, you know, unbalanced, you know, they show, show us that. Yeah. You know, they kept us straight and they, they played hard on us, you know, and, you know, we just had a uh, soaking the toughness. And, you know, where we come from, the trenches, so. That's real. Easy, That's know. real. I saw and play with them. That's real. I call it choking the cheek. Choking the cheek, I like that. I would chicken. Yeah. I would choke the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so what's choking the chicken? Okay. <laughs> I'm the mama. Yeah, yeah. So daddy, daddy, like I said, cause I don't want to make nobody look no way, cause he was always there. Like he, he was a, he was a provider, but when he wasn't there, like he held it down. I'm he the man, and I'm the girl, and then they boys. So I got to keep a way to keep the that's street right. to make them think, hey. That's so right. mama would choke that chicken. Yeah. That's, the, that's the only thing I could think to beat them with. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Little bro, you just had a spring game, right? How the spring game go? Going good. Going good. Yeah, man. I, I, I love what I saw out there. I told you that. You know what I mean? And again, your mother and father have, have set the ball high. Your brothers have set the ball high. I don't see no reason why you ain't gonna reach those goals. I feel like me and you guys, like, like it's you know what? A lot of people know who people are. Yeah. I never knew who you guys were. Yeah. Yeah. We connected off of just a conversation. You know what I mean? Like just a conversation. And like I said before, I even met y'all. Them, yeah. Yeah. I, this was after the the conversation. We sat and talked for what another like an hour and a half. Coach, we lit, we basically had to break each other apart and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what he told me? Yeah. I got time. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hey, and guess what? You Amen. Learn more about each other. You know, the more talking, more conversation. You learn more about that person, the individual. You know, and you understand. Yeah. You understand. That's the time I taught him how to utilize. You understand? 
I don't think people get the the Trust me. the kid. The kid sat there and looked me in my face and told me, "I got time." He I does. said, "Y'all gotta leave." No, I got time. I went back to Coach Cox and I said, Coach Cox, man, what's their name? He like, oh, that's uh, Mullen. I'm like, man, well, you got yourself, son. He like, no, he graduated. I said, oh, yeah, he did tell me he was going to Indiana. I said, well, they got them some. And I told him, I said, uh, you keep your structure no matter what. The best thing you did was remove yourself from your situation and go better yourself and make your own path. I already set the, the cornerstone for him. The older brother who's not here right now set the cornerstone for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the examples are there. Yeah. No, no excuses, all results. Ain't that what I say? Mm -hmm. You know, such thing as, as an excuse for what? That's why I wrote, like, so when you say, when you say it was love and it was easy being a mother, come on, it man. Was. So therefore, like, we spoke about more motivation within our community, more speaking because these young, it's young ladies that's having these kids. Yeah. And they don't co-parent. You got to put that time in there with these kids and be That's there for them and understand and talk to them more. And can't be just out here and they ain't paying attention to them. Yeah. They got going on. Invested you know, in them. Yeah, exactly. And then you got the dad sometimes out here that. not doing the same thing. So yeah. yeah. When you got mama one way going another way and they ain't really paying attention to daddy. And they seeing that as kids like... That's how it's easy to get misled into negative stuff. It's funny you say that, right? So, I, 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 um, I, I spoke at the police department, yeah. and I told them, I said, yo, you, you know what the problem is? The parents don't see themselves as a problem. They always be like, oh, that ain't my baby. You right. It's not your baby. It's you. Because they are a reflection of you guys. They are a mirror effect of you guys. So a lot of parents, the kids are mirror effects mm -hmm. of them. When they go out in the streets and they talking about people and they start and they bullying, that's what they see at home. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want nothing but you all to continue your success. You're going to be all right. I told you that from the jump. You leaving how many days? Ten days. Ten days. I'm so excited for you, bro. He got a down pack on with him. I mean, he's ready. <laughs> he's ready. Coach, that's been one of the best interviews I've ever did. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, I don't know what one gonna top this, but because it was just they so many. They all just got to make sense. It, it, yeah. The learning points that I that I get out of, that that people will get from you guys yeah. will change lives, and I can't get, like change lives, and that's what we yeah. looking to do yeah. every day, man. Rather we in the NFL yeah. or, or we on the right around the corner, or right around the corner. Parents hearing it too, though, man. Just exactly. knowing that they play a whole part of the kids growing up to be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Right. You gotta put that hard time and dedication into them too. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff got to go on the back burner. Yeah, man. A so lot. You can't act like you don't acknowledge certain things that they doing. Yeah. And what's going around their society, you know, in there. So you got to bring their attention and let them acknowledge certain things what you see and you point it out to them. Like, yeah. you see that's what's going on? So they don't get in their head like, yeah. Okay. Okay, I know. Okay, I ain't gonna be that type. I ain't gonna be Right, that right, right, right. You see it a lot in the streets. Right and I bring it to their attention. Yeah. And we taught them how not to yeah. judge it at the same time. Yeah. This is what's going on, but don't judge it. Yeah. Because we've been there. We've been those. Yeah. So we can't. Right. You gotta have understand and it. one thing about God, so he, God's so good and it's, and it's so tricky, is because we got church and we got outside of church, right? Mm -hmm. I go to church sometimes, not all the time, but I just strongly believe God got me out here yeah. for the ones that don't. You real? I go in there and intercept some of that stuff so I can intercede right. out here. You understand what I'm saying? So God just gave me all the favor we needed so that I could keep pressing forward. So when I do go out there, yeah. I got, I you got gonna, it's going to back me up. My, my background going to back me up. Y'all hands not going to be the realest in the NFL parents ever. My, my, my background <laughs> going to back us up. Like, like for real. the real stuff. Like That's, we got the ones coming up like, we just had all this money. We, we we come from the lights being off and the water being off. Like this some real stuff I'm telling you. Like we we don't I don't cry about it. And my kids like my don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? They had the belief. I lost a brother, New Year's 2009, and my kids had to stand strong for me then. Yeah. Cause I nearly lost it. They got in and all, and they were young boys. Yeah. This child right here say pray before we go to bed every night. Yeah. So God got a constant reminder around there. Yeah. Cause the devil ain't telling you to do nothing. Yeah, good. yeah, that's real, boy. Man, I pre listen to me. 
I appreciate y'all so much, man. I tell y'all this all the time. And I'm going to tell y'all a thousand more times before the day is over, man. I appreciate y'all so much, man. I like, appreciate him. You guys are him. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you. Like, the, 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 the strength that y'all showed uh, the, to, uh, the, to overcome adversity, to be consistent. That's, the, that's what it's about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be consistent. No matter what. No matter. To be consistent. No matter what. Say it one more time. To be consistent. No matter what. That's going to get us through everything. I got the Mullen family with me, man. And uh, my, the Mullen consistent family with me. And this is our goals for the next generation is to remain yes, consistent sir. in everything that we do. Yes, sir. Again, I thank y'all so much for everything that y'all do, that everything that y'all going to do. Amen. We're going to speak that into existence oh, yes. right now. Everything oh, yes. that y'all going to do. Yes. And this is just the first. It's still a process. Is yeah, it? It's still going. It's just the first round. Yeah, it's still going. Still we got going. more rounds to go. Yeah, you better believe it. I appreciate it. I love y'all. The you. clock ain't even started. Come on, now. <laughs> so I'm sitting here with Taiwan, the motherland's uh, godparents. And the whole purpose of this is because what we want to do is bring out, bring hope and understanding for our community. You know what I mean? And like I was just telling the family is that they are, you know how people use relationship goals? Mm -hmm. They are not necessarily a relationship goals, but family goals. You know what I mean? That's the way we, and you guys are an extension of that family. Correct. You know what I mean? Those long days, those hard nights, that those turned off lights, those turned on lights, you know what I mean? So what I basically want to do is uh, have you guys just give me a slight walk. Like, how was it? How was, how, like, how was it being a godparent? Like, what, like, what did you all see? Well, I can tell you from from my perspective is um, um, Krisha did a great job. Uh, Trayvon Tray, Trayvon did a great job with him. It wasn't it wasn't work for us. Right. It was it was it was a blessing. Yeah. Um, because he all the kids all the boys are respectful, uh, but with Taiwan, he's special. Yeah. To us, uh, we've been knowing Taiwan since he's been in the fifth or the sixth, sixth grade, grade. Sixth grade. And he's attached to us, um, like immediately. Yeah. Immediately, yeah. just 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 caught on to us. Right. Um, but it's like I said, it, it wasn't work. It was more of a blessing for us. Yeah. Um, to be able to encounter, uh, being able to be in this kid's space, his atmosphere. Right. Um, because based off what type of kid he really is. Right. Um, is that just my perspective of, um, you know, my relationship and how, you know, tying together with the family and. The dedication, hard yeah, work. Yeah. Oh man, the kid. Hard work is an understatement. Yeah. He he I, he would wake up at four thirty in the morning to work out with me. Yeah. Like every morning. So like his work ethic, I've never seen a kid that worked harder than him. Yeah, the extension Having of him, all, yeah. just like he's an extension of you guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it takes a village. Absolutely. You guys are a part of that village. That's why I'm happy that y'all came and sat down and, and had these words because our, our community has to understand something that. Yes. It's, it takes more than just one person or mm -hmm. two people. It takes everybody, when you see something, grab on to it yep. and, and home in and push it. Yep. Yep. And that's what you guys are doing. So I just want to say thank you all for being who you guys are and watching him grow. And um, to Taiwan, we love you, man. Love you, man. Love you, man. Get that degree. <laughs> Go get that degree. Right, so I'm sitting here with my guy, Coach Pop. Coach Pop, Coach Taiwan. And um, Coach, I, w I just want you to give me a little input on what you saw with on uh, Taiwan at an early age. Oh man. With Taiwan, aka Speedy. Yeah. And he was given that nickname when he was a little pup, around about six, seven years old and that and uh Optimus Lee, um, when he was at the Broncos at first. Okay. And then, you know, Keisha she had us stab stabbed herself out there and then took the boys over to the hurricanes where he really excelled as a leader yeah and um being a like a dual threat yeah on offense and defense and football set but always just great kids man. yeah um from his older brothers from man man to trayvon to him they, they were always good kids that yeah. they had good raising right appreciate and play with them right she and um plus um trayvon senior he laid that hammer down too so, right you know they, they they was always a family atmosphere they always did things by the book and she always kept a strong hold on him. Yeah. And he was just one of the 
one of them boys that stayed in line. Yeah. And he he, he waited his turn. And you know what, what coach? Uh, and I'm I'm a key saying coach because I don't think some coaches don't understand the uh, uh, position that they hold. Mm -hmm. And by you still, he's getting ready to go off to college right now. Yeah. But yet and still, Coach Pop right here. You know why Coach Pop right here? Because you're an extension of his father and his mother. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we need to be within our community. And we have to understand that we have to con we have to constantly be an extension. You yeah. know what I mean? So first and foremost, I just appreciate you for being who you are as a man. Thank you. Man. You know what I mean? So. Uh, you play a big role in his life, and that's the reason why he went and got you to come over here and be on screen because of the role that you played in his life and, yeah. and constantly play in his life. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me just let me be a part of this. I thank him for letting me be a part of his life, and um, appreciate Trayvon for letting me be a part of the boy's life and just being a part of that. Peter Slash Mullen yeah. household, man, because they good people, man. They've right. been good people. Mom been good people. Dad been good people. Kids been A1. So, you know, when you, you get that, you don't mind helping. Right. You know, I got my kids my own. They all grown. But, you know, like you said, it's an extension in the community. That's why I did the Little League coaching. Yeah. A lot of kids, dudes get it for the reasons of winning, losing type stuff. Nah, that ain't why I do yeah. it, man. It runs deeper than that. You know, it's just the extension of touch. I done took hold of a lot of kids. And then you know how I know it's true because even he went, they left and went on the other side and played against you. And guess mm -hmm. what? Still yeah, here. Yeah, that's my boy. You know, know what I mean? Speedy, my boy, man. Always been a good kid, man. Always just, and then in the high school level when came into the city. I was always kept tabs on them. Yeah. And then when I got the opportunity to get a job at the Coconut Creek coaching football, yeah. that just, man, that bright my day and made me want to just know I wanted to do that. Yeah. You know, and um, God, being, with, serious, ain't it? being with Coach Cox and with what he's been doing, changing the culture over yeah. there, and it's been a beautiful thing. That's why I love being a part of it. And just kids like Speedy and I, what we got. Because with his talents and his from his brother talent that was there and his little brother talents that's coming up, yeah, they could easily just follow the trend and leave and do what yeah. everybody else do. Right. But they stay loyal because you know why? They got a story to tell. Yeah. Them. And they focus. Yeah. And again, that's an extension of his parents, that's an extension of you guys at the younger age and now even now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you just you guys just continue to do what y'all doing, man. At yeah. over there at the creek, man. Y'all making noise and um, I, I think coaching runs way deeper than championship rings and things of that nature. It's about it's about empowering our young men and, and you you being a part of that along with Coach Cox and the rest of the staff. You guys are doing a phenomenal job, man. You're doing a phenomenal job. Continue to do a phenomenal job in the community, man. And I just want to say I love you and I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, boss. Appreciate you too, Definitely, man. man. Doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, three years? Three years. So you met him when, uh, what, sophomore year? Sophomore year. So Go Ted. On. Give going me a, to a sophomore year. Going yeah. to a sophomore year. Okay, yeah, so like springtime. Yeah. So yeah. give me an idea of what you've seen out of, uh, out of young Taiwan Muller. Um, so, you know, our whole coaching style stepped on the scene going into Taiwan sophomore year. Uh -huh. um, so me coming in, not knowing nobody from Crete, not knowing no players, no none of that, I came on as a um, D-line coach. But I also came into school as a teacher. Yeah. So I taught algebra. Just so happened Taiwan had my class second period. Okay. And then you have you have players that just ball players, and then you have players that got something special to them, something different. So Taiwan brought something different to the table. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, when you have foolishness going around, all this th going the around. Distractions. Distractions. But yeah. he still managed to keep his head straight. Yeah. Uh, so it came a point in time where Taiwan, you just gotta do your thing. You separate from certain people, but you just see a different person in, in Taiwan. It's like uh, some just have that gift. Yeah, you know what I mean, got that glow about them. Yeah, and it ain't just football. Right, it's just something different. A person. Yeah, yeah. So personality-wise, just a great kid. Uh, so fast forward a year later, Taiwan in my class and. Just so happened, hey, Coach, man, let me get one of them. Because I ate the salad every day for lunch, right? Yeah. Coach, let me get one of them salads. Got you tomorrow, Taiwan. So, from probably October through the whole season, 
me and Taiwan at lunch every day eating a salad. <laughs> every day. So we chop it up, you know what I mean? Eat yeah. Our salad, meal every day. So it's just. Yeah, building you know, that bond. We're building a bond, and, and you know, it's just something different about him. So yeah. now we go back and he that same leader that I seen on the field in the classroom yeah. around the school. And, you know what I mean? It, it means something to me more than just a football player. Right. Just seeing a young man develop and grow. He become like that, like I call, I call him my little bro. Yeah. He become like that little yeah. brother. Yeah. You so know what I mean? Make sure you look out for him. Make sure he, you know, keeping his head on yeah. straight. And think about it. You know, 15, 16 years old. There's so much going on and yeah. so much you can get into. And with you being a star player and things coming at you and but. You manage to keep your head on yeah. straight and, and yeah. do your thing. So um, I wish that boy the best, and I know he's gonna be great. Yeah, I tell him that all the time. You're gonna be great. Yeah. Um, always, Even in life, just yeah, in life, just period. In life. Forget yeah. about the football. He got he a great kid, yeah. man, and, and he's gonna do great things. So yeah. The football gonna last for X a amount short of years. Time, X gonna, amount of years. Yeah, it ain't gonna be forever. Right. It's what you put out, in, and he put out a lot. So, That's right. You know, we gonna get a lot. And I appreciate that so much, yeah. coach. Because, like, like you said, I, I like that you highlighted the the in school process because people don't take the student part more serious. They take more serious the athlete part, and we have to be in the system. You know what I mean? Yeah. Create the system, create the life you want to live, and he did that. Yeah. So you 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 played the game, you're still playing the game, and you're doing it by all means necessary to be productive. Right, right. By you been in the school system, you've seen a lot. You know what I mean? They'll understand the system. Right. Exactly. You got to get through the system, do what needs to be done, and then be great. Right. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you just sharing your story and sharing your uh, your growth process with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and clearly it means a lot to him because he sent you over yeah. there. Yeah, definitely. So I, I ask that you continue to be great as an individual, be great as a, as a teacher, be great within our community, man. Definitely. definitely. So yeah. thank you, Cole, man. I love appreciate you, man. It. Love you too, baby. Coach, I appreciate you coming over, and um, I just want to – uh, say thank you for uh, being who you are and leading these young men because people don't understand that you are an extension of their fathers. You become their fathers. And what I want you to do is uh, give me an idea on how it was because you, you just got to Creek, what, like three years of Oak Grove, right? Yep. So that, that was uh, uh, Mullins what? That was his sophomore year. Sophomore year. So kind of give me a synopsis on on what you saw in him when you first got there, in the family within itself, because you become an extension of their family as well. Well, man, getting there, uh, man, he he was the first one to ask me a question. Uh, when they introduced me to the team, he asked me why I came there. Yeah. You know, and I, I simply told him because it was some of the same athletes I was used to coaching at my previous spot. Yeah. You know, so it was just some things that I, I saw I could build on. But that moment kind of showed me who who he was as a as a young man, you know, for him to be the only sophomore at the time to say something, yeah. you know, in the whole building, out of seniors didn't say anything, juniors didn't say nothing. It was just him, yeah. you know. So that kind of kind of spoke to me, and and after that, you know, going into the season, man, I at the time he was probably third on the depth chart, man. Yeah, like, you know, he he was one of them guys that. He was there, but we didn't really know who he was, man, until third game of the season. Third game of the season, we had some injuries with some, some guys that played in front of him. I set some, some other guys out through this, uh, disciplinary reasons or whatever. Okay. So he got his opportunity, man, and and he instantly caught my, my attention on a, a break on the ball that was probably the, the sweetest I've seen outside of, at the time, outside of two other people that I coached right. at the, on the position. So um, that, that kind of caught my eye immediately then and he's been a starter for me ever since yeah. you know he started ever since at, at corner um his mom was a was a big supporter after that 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 year even though we we suffered we right. suffered through some some hard times man because so, y'all was like one and nine yeah we went one and nine man won the last game of the season that'll make most kids leave yeah man and, and she you know that she sat down talked with my ad and my ad backed me and once he gave gave the approval of me she she followed suit, man, and, yeah. and she been locked in ever since. The family been locked in ever since, yeah. man, riding, riding with me, supporting me at every game, supporting the kids at every game. Even when we, we looking looking horrible at times, she, she's the, the, the one in the stands that you can hear out, yeah. out of everybody and kind of motivate the kids yeah. because they know she always going to be there and yeah. she always going you know, to hold true to it. So, 
you know, that that's kind of been a been a big thing. Dad has been a big part of it too. Yeah. Coming out showing his support. So, you know, it just man, a, just a, the family, the whole family, man. Yeah. It's been, been great to since I've been there. Man, listen to me, coach. Like the the things that uh, you're doing out there to creek right now is amazing. You know, not, not, nothing short of amazing. The turnaround is amazing. You know, it's always a uphill battle, but it. It, it runs deeper than championships and, and wins and losses because yeah. the wins and losses that really count is the, the amount of kids that you push through. Yeah. And um, it shows uh, exactly what you're doing when you got kids like Taiwan coming through. And then he sets the bar high because you setting the bar high now. The family setting the bar high because now you have an example to lead off on. You got somebody to mimic after. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing. I want to say thank you for the way that you're running the program the way you uh, allow me to come in and speak to the kids and actually have the opportunity to become a part of his family along with your family, that shows a testament to how great you're looking to change the culture over there. So uh, with that being said, man, I just want to say thank you. And it's nothing but much success on your coaching career because that's what you're going to have a long-term career. I can see that already, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man, it's all love, man. I love you, brother. Thank you, man. You know, you, you, know, you can come anytime, anywhere I'm back. Man. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah. Yeah. Creek boys. Fan it. <laughs> Yo, we here with Amari and Sean. Uh, Taiwan, they want to say a, a couple words to you before you go off to school. Take it away. Uh, I wish you the best. I hope you do good. Stay, stay focused. Don't worry about nobody else. Just keep getting in your bag and focus and. That's it. Yeah, the, stay on what he said. Stay on your grind. Don't let competition phase you. I already know you're going to go out there, play ball, and kill competition. Put on for your brothers and your family. Good luck on the next level, cuz. <laughs> Good luck. Mike Lowry said it. Okay. Yeah, keep grinding, bro. Good luck, but right, you know FF, you feel me? Tie dot, you feel me? I want to say good luck to my brother, my cousin, Boo Boo. Go out there and work. You already know what this is. We, we, we wish. You the best, us, everybody else, we wish you the best and go out there and work. That's all yeah, I got to say. I can't run you over in the big town in the ACC, but, you know, good luck, though. <laughs> for sure, for sure, you already know. That's it, you know. <laughs> Keep working, you feel me? You right after your brother, you're going to do your thing. That's for sure, that's in the family. Uh, Coach Lane with the Florida Fire. Uh, just want to send Taiwan off with a farewell and proud of him. Uh, been with our program since he was in the ninth grade. Um, came through, just watched him grow up and uh, proud of the young man that he is today. Uh, Indiana's going to get a, get a great talent. I know he's going to do great things and uh, go make a name for himself. And, um, you know, anything you need, we all here for him. We're just proud of him, man. Love him. Hey, love him. Hey, it's Erica. I wanted to wish you congratulations. You know, stay out the mix. Do what you got to do. Just keep striving, you know? Good luck. My boy Dada. Shout out to my boy T-Mug. You feel me? You feel me? You know, you're going on to the next level. Hope you do big things, great things, you know? Uh, I hope you be like your big brother. Uh, no catches in a college. You know? And good luck on the next level, though. All right, I just want to say good luck, little cuz. You know, keep grinding. We got a lot of talent in our family. You know, we are destined for greatness. But, you know, you got to stay prayed up, stay focused, and don't let nothing distract you. Yeah, what she said, stay focused and keep your head up. And don't just get your three years over with and make it to the NFL. Thanks, bro. Thanks for everything. Thanks for guiding me the right way. I love you. You know, keep pushing me. I love you. All right. I want to um, congratulate my son, Taiwan Mullen, for going off to Indiana. I hope so he have a great, successful years there and graduate. Go do his thing while he's playing ball. You know, go do the best he can do up there. Go make an example of a lot of things. And, uh, you know, uh, go off and do, go off to the NFL, go succeed, get a degree, you know, and uh, just try to do the best he can do out there, man, and make the best of himself, man, to become the best player he ever want to come. He done put a whole lot of time and dedication at his young age, when he was little league, high school. So I just wish him so well, man. I love him to death, and I just hope he go out and do, have a great, successful year. Uh, 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 good, you know, in college and uh, get, like I say, man, and do his thing, man. Yeah. Bro! Bro! 
Three down, one to go. Yeah. Go get that degree and bring it home to me, baby. We got nerd, nerd. So as you go, I'm asking God again to send those warnings. Angels, spiritual angels, gospel angels, and ministry angels to keep you covered from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, baby. In Jesus' name. Indiana. Maybe come look for y'all about my baby. <laughs>